Hi, this is Ishinu for Life, and today I'd like to present Boshishi no Kun no Dai. This is the third Bo Kata in the Ishinu Karate system. It's a challenging kata. It's a long kata, but it is a beautifully flowing kata. I'll execute the kata several times. And each time, I'm going to try to emphasize something different. The first time, I want to emphasize form. That is my posture, my centering, my stances, making sure that they are correct. The second time, I'm going to emphasize the mechanical execution of the bow technique, whether it's a punch or block. The third time, I'm going to try to execute for speed with less concern for form and less concern for uh, mechanical execution, although hopefully those elements will be there, but my emphasis will be on speed. The next time I'm going to try to put the elements of form, uh, mechanics, and speed together to execute a proper flow of power. So, <clears throat> let's get started. As with all my karate, I'm trying to be specific in my execution and specific with my posture, specific with my stances, my direction of travel. So this time I'm going to execute with the emphasis on the mechanics of handling the bow and the execution of the bow techniques. So if you saw my previous video on Tokomani no Kun, I mentioned a couple key points and among them was pointing the bow 
in the direction I'm going and sandwiching the bow uh, between my hand and my target. Pulling the bow into position. So as I execute this time, try to keep an eye on the execution of the particular bow technique. So, it's a workout, and no matter what you're emphasizing, you have to place a demand on your karate, on your execution, trying to get to the most efficient and effective technique. So this time I'm going to go for speed and like I mentioned earlier the form may suffer a bit the mechanical execution may suffer a bit but that's okay because I want to see if I can execute faster and I'm working on speed speed in my stances speed in my blocks and strikes, speed in my swinging of the bow. Let's see how that works out.
I felt it, and I hope that you could see it. There is definitely a lapse in posture and stances. There was definitely a lapse in proper execution, but there was an increase of speed, and that's what I was trying to accomplish. You know, all the form in the world, all the correct execution that you can muster won't be effective unless you can deliver the great, a great amount of speed. Doing a technique at half speed or three quarter speed or executing your kata uh, without ever putting 100% into all these elements, well, you always fall short of uh, your achieving your potential. And like I said earlier, you have to put a demand on your karate. So, this time, I'm going to try to include the elements of form, mechanics, and speed, and hopefully demonstrate the flow of power. Okay? Good timing, good mechanics, proper focusing, uh, and a in uh, a clean execution. Let's see how that works out. So at the very end of the kata, once I completed, I come up to Masubi Dashi. I'm in a Zan Shin state of mind. Zan Shin meaning the mind behind. So I've been executing all these techniques. I've had the thought of my opponent 
the visualization of the blocks and strikes. I've been fighting the fight. And when I finish, I just don't cut that off. It just doesn't stop. Okay? My mind is still working. My body's still generating. I'm still breathing. Okay? So those thoughts are still emanating. That's what that last couple moments after I finish and I'm here. Let those thoughts, let that energy keep yourself centered. Recapture your breathing and uh, your calm. Get back to your, your calm from Zan Chin mind to Shinma, which is awareness without attachment. And that'll give you an opportunity to uh, continue to absorb the, the presence that you created in the execution of your content. So, what about tempo? Well, my sensei, in describing execution, said, go as fast as you can without breaking your form. So, in executing the kata, I'm visualizing my opponent, his position, his posture, his technique, his reactions as I execute mine. Sometimes the techniques I execute are short. If I'm doing a twist punch, that's fast, very fast. If I'm executing a uh, side head block, well, it's as fast as I can go without breaking form, but it's not as fast as that punch I just executed. If I execute a big, swing okay. compared to the punch and compared to that block that's pretty slow but it's as fast as I can go while maintaining my form so when I change from stance to stance okay, some stances take a little longer to get in and out of than other stances okay. so some of the mechanics of the technique take a little bit longer to execute than other techniques. This is what gives the kata its tempo. Okay, I'm not racing from beginning to end, okay, but I'm trying to execute each technique as fast as I can without breaking form. This requires the visualization and uh, the flow of power, the correct breathing. So when you see a kata executed well, it's not just a matter of form. It's not just a matter of mechanics. You have to inject speed for the techniques to be effective. You have to place that demand on your body. If you're always executing a punch like this, and then all of a sudden you have to do that, well, when you make contact, your body's not used to that. If it hasn't been operating at that speed, your body's not used to that. You're gonna be all out of sync. You're gonna be less effective. So, you know, we can practice a variety of different ways. Like I said, I did it once for form, I did it once for uh, proper mechanics, I did it for speed, and then I did it for the flow of power. Okay. Now I'm gonna do it one more time, and I, I'm going to try to project my visualization to you, the viewer, to see if you can pick up my opponent.
So, the legendary Chojun Miyagi commented about Son Chin Kata. And he said he may have gotten it right one time out of 30. I should be so lucky. So, as you practice your kata in various modes for various purposes, all leading up to your goal, and the goals of Vishenru are self-defense, self-improvement, and perfection of character. So, don't be disappointed if you don't get it right. If you do get it right, remember that. Savor that. Try to allow that to sink in. That will allow you to take a step forward. And as you advance in your karate, you know, initially we take big steps. We take leaps in our learning and development of skill. But after decades of practice, we take very small, incremental, barely perceptible steps. So imperceptible that most people can't see it. Even a practitioner may not always see it until he steps back and gets that one out of 30 times. Says, yeah. So that's it for today. Boshi Shino Kundo Dai. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Keep up the practice. Mission for life.